If you're visiting Universal Islands of Adventure this year, this is the most important video you could watch. Hey, what's going on everybody? Rick here, and this is your 2024 walking tour of Universal Islands of Adventure. Before you scan into the theme park, especially if you have kids, I want you to do this. Right out front here is a height requirement board. All the major rides, the height you have to be to ride them. I find it better to check your kids' heights here. Take a picture of them, standing by it. But it's better than getting to the ride, the kid comes up to the ride, all excited to get on the ride, and then they discover they are too short for it. It's better to do it here. Set your expectations before you enter the park. Just beyond the height requirement board is the kiosk to purchase tickets. I do recommend you purchase tickets online. You're already gonna wait in enough lines once you're inside the park. No need to wait in line to get your tickets. Now, if you do purchase online, you can probably print them out the house or over here, I will show you the wheel call kiosks. Right this way to the right of the entrance. Right here, you can print down your tickets. And then, as we get closer to the entrance, I want to point out over here there is an ATM machine, restrooms, and a guest services. So there are restrooms and guest services before you enter the park. Now that you have your tickets or your passes, we can scan into the park. Now Universal has added photo validation. Now there is a way for you to opt out of photo validation. Just see a team member. I've never seen anyone opt out, but if you so desire to do so, you may. Now that you've scanned into the park, you are now in the port of entry. A couple things to show you here. First, this kiosk right here is an express pass kiosk. You can buy express passes to skip the lines here at Universal Islands of Adventure. And then to the right, you have guest services and a first aid over here. So you have two guest services, one before you enter the park and one after. Now, on the left side of the port of entry, some things to show you over here. First thing I wanna show you is the stroller and scooter rental area, which would be right over here. If you have the need for a scooter or a wheelchair or a stroller, this is the place. Also, just past this are lockers. So if you need a locker for the day, they would be right there for a small fee. And then just to the left of the lockers, restrooms, ladies and men's. And now we're at the exit and there's one last spot for you to buy merchandise. Now let's move deeper into the port of entry. To our left here is the main store, the trading company. And then I want to point out, new for this year, no more paper maps. You need to use the Universal app. There's three versions of it, three different languages. Download that app. I would suggest you download it before you get here. Kind of play with it at your home before you get here and start to have to actually use it. On the right side of the port of entry, we have a little candy shop. Also down here is a year-round Christmas store. And to the left, another entrance into the trading company, the main store here in the port of entry. We'll walk a little further this way. I'll show you there's a better shot of the year-round Christmas store. And then a little kiosk here to get some snacks and some beverages. And I'm gonna show you a couple places to eat. And then one place that is very, very important to a lot of you. We'll get to that in a minute. But first to the right here, the Croissant Moon Bakery. A quick service spot for food, but we do have a 
a table service spot over here. One of only two inside of this theme park. Confisco is a full service table service restaurant. I enjoy this restaurant very much. And now I will spin around and show you a very important spot for a lot of you. Right here will be your Starbucks. There it is. And lucky for you guys, it's near the beginning or the start of the theme park. Now looking back to where we just came, a little summary. After we scan into the park, you're in the port of entry. There is a guest services. There is a first aid. There is a place to rent strollers and wheelchairs and scooters. There's restrooms, the main stores this way, and a couple spots to grab some treats or some quick service along with this table service restaurant here. And of course, what I just showed you, the Starbucks. A quick note about Express Passes. If you stay at one of Universal's premier hotels, that would be the Hard Rock, Portofino Bay, or Royal Pacific, Express Passes come with your hotel room. Your hotel card key acts as an Express Pass. No need to purchase those in the park. Now that you've made it through the port of entry and probably had your Starbucks, you have to decide. Do you go left through the theme park or right through the theme park? Left will take you towards Marvel Superhero Island and Toon Lagoon. If we go right, it will take us to Seuss Landing, the Lost Continent, and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I think most people go right. Most people are in a rush to get to the Wizarding World. So I guess for the purposes of this video, we will go right to. I'll point out some things along the way. To the right here is the Backwater Bar. Very nice bar for you. And then just beyond the Backwater Bar, again to our right, restrooms. Right back that way. And now we are ready to enter Seuss Landing to the left. See that big green ham? <laughs> That's green eggs and ham. I'll show you some of the rides when we get in here, but we can see the high in the sky trolley going right now. What's that? You don't like green eggs and ham? That's not okay. Try them, try them, and you may. Right next to the green eggs and ham is the If I Ran the Zoo play area for kids. I guess I'll mention this. If you are not interested in Seuss Landing, come this way just to the left of green eggs and ham. A lot of people consider this a shortcut to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter as you bypass a lot of Seuss Landing. But we're not going to do that. We're gonna take the long way through Seuss Landing. Right in front of us and kind of towards the right, we have the attraction, the Cat in the Hat, and its gift shop, Cats, Hats, and Things. And just beyond, the cat in a hat attraction. We have one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Straight ahead there. Keeping on through Seuss Landing. Straight ahead in the big top, the Circus McGurkis Cafe. A place to grab some food. It is a quick service restaurant. I would be remiss if I didn't mention to the right of the Circus McGurkis Big Top. Restrooms are right that way. Just beyond the Circus McGurkis, we have all the books you can read. And right outside that area, as you can see, is a spot for a character meet and greet and performances. And to the left, we have the Carousel. It's a merry-go-round from the mind of Dr. Seuss. The other ride here in Seuss Landing is the High in the Sky Trolley. There it goes in action. Right there is an ice cream shop for you. There's some other treats and shops in here. 
as we go further down this walkway. To your left is the Gertrude McFuzz shop. Kind of the main shop here in Seuss Landing. And to your right, Snookers and Snookers, Sweet Candy Cookers is the place for treats. Across the way from Snookers and Snookers, the Mulberry Street store. It's the same store as Gertrude McFuzz. It's all connected. But one last spot for the treats and the snacks, corn dogs, chips, churros, ices, sodas, things like that. That'd be right here at Goose Juice, Moose Juice. Or if you prefer, you can call it Moose Juice, Goose Juice. If you haven't figured it out already, Seuss Landing is the best spot in this park for kids. And now we can say bye-bye to Seuss Landing as we head into what's known currently at the date of this recording, the Lost Continent. Now, I am posting this video in early January of 2024. I do expect an announcement regarding the Lost Continent soon. But right now, all I can tell you is what is here currently. So let's go check it out. Right now, it's a place for, for food and shopping. This spot here was home to the main attraction in the Lost Continent. Maybe by the time you're watching this video, we have an announcement for a replacement, but not today. Across the way from that is a table service restaurant known as Mythos. Kind of a, a finer dining experience in a theme park. It's won the award of world's best theme park and restaurant many, many years. Table service. I like the beef medallions there. And then we have another shop here. Treasures of Poseidon. And right down the pathway here, another place to eat. Like I said, right now, a mainly an area for eating and shopping. On your screen right now is Fire Eater's Grill, a very popular quick service spot. And then across the way from it, this area here, characters will perform here from time to time. Characters such as Kung Fu Panda and King Julian. So kind of a spot for them to do a performance and do a meet and greet with guests. Perhaps take a photo. All right, let's keep moving through the Lost Continent. To our right here, kind of straight ahead and to the right, is Delicious Kebabs. Another quick service spot, but this way, I've got to show you back here as the restrooms are back this way, straight ahead, but to our right, let me point this out, is the first aid station, right there. So if you need first aid, you've got uh, an area at the front of the park and then right here in the Lost Continent. Now, back on the main path, just across the way from the delicious kebabs, this store over here. There is some merchandise in here for you to purchase, but mainly it does henna tattoos and it also offers psychic readings. Before we leave the Lost Continent, you will have the Mystic Fountain. Not chatting today, but it will interact with the guests. And then the last store, the All Hallows Eve Boutique, it does switch themes throughout the year, but it's mainly a Halloween or Universal Classic Monsters store. As soon as you leave the Lost Continent, as I'm still calling it, you have the Hogsmeade Station, which is home to the Hogwarts Express. Now, in order to take the Hogwarts Express, you must have a park-to-park -park ticket, as it does take you in between the two theme parks of Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios Florida. Now, let's be brave and head into Hogsmeade. It is going to be crowded in here. This is going to be tough, but I'll do my best. Right after entering Hogsmeade, to your left will be Honey Duke's Sweet Shop. And then to your right, the most popular ride 
at Islands of Adventure, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, which is currently a 150 minute wait. Always the longest wait time in the park. Let's go take a closer look at it. You do not have to go through metal detectors to ride this roller coaster. However, they will not allow bags on the ride, so they do have lockers for you. You can still take some stuff in your pockets, small things as, like I said, no metal detectors. And I think the most you can do with a bag is if you have a three-pronged fanny pack. But book bags and backpacks, gotta store those in the locker. Super fun ride. A lot of elements to this ride. You got like seven launches, I think. A backwards section. There's a drop track here as well. And of course, theme to Harry Potter. So it is the most popular ride in this theme park. for every ride here. I will leave a link to it in the description box. Now let's get back to where we started, which is Honeydukes, and I'll take you through the rest of Hogsmeade Village. When it comes to butterbeer, these butterbeer carts that you see in the village, they only serve regular butterbeer and frozen butterbeer. For hot butterbeer, you need to go to the Three Broomsticks or Hogshead. Here is the Three Broomsticks, a counter service restaurant. And just down the way here is Hogshead, the bar. Get all types of uh, adult drinks in here, along with all three types of butterbeer, regular, frozen, and hot, which is my favorite butterbeer. Moving on down the walkway here, I need to show you the public conveniences, as they call it here. In other words, the restrooms. Beware, Moaning Mortal is in these restrooms, so, or at least the men's. Across the way from the public conveniences, the Owl Post, where you can buy your magical wands. Right next to the Owl Post is Ollivander's. Now, you don't buy wands in here. This is home to a show, Ollivander's Wand Experience. Little show they do here in Hogsmeade. But you get your wands in the Owl's Post or right up here. There is this standalone cart that sells the magical wands as well. And all through Hogsmeade, magical wand spots. They are marked by a medallion on the ground. Let's see if I can find one. When you purchase your magical wand, it does come with a map of the wand spots, but each spot is marked with a medallion on the ground like that. As we get closer to the castle, Hogwarts Castle, there's a stage over here and they do two shows. Right now the Frog Choir just got done. They also have the Tri-Wizard Pep Rally. So a couple performances here, live performances in Hogsmeade. That right there, that is the Flight of the Hippogriff. It's a family friendly roller coaster but it does have a height requirement of 36 inches. But again, for more details on this ride and other rides here, I do have that ride guide video ready for you. The last ride to show you in here, of course, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. You don't have to actually go on the ride. If you just want to enjoy walking through Hogwarts Castle, you may. Because I will note that this ride did make Rick's top six rides that make you sick. I'll leave a link to that video too. At the time of this recording, there is no year-round castle projection show. But I believe Universal is working on a new one. If that happens sometime this year, I will let you know about it. So make sure you are subscribed to this channel so you don't miss any of the Universal news. And now that I've given you the lay of the land of the Wizarding World, Hogsmeade, I can say, welcome to Jurassic Park. As soon as you walk under those arches, to your left is the watering hole, a place for adult beverages, and then right down this path, this way, 
it's going to take you to the Velocicoaster. So let's take this path to give you a better look at the fastest roller coaster in the park. At the end of the path, we're going to veer right to get to the Velocicoaster, or it may come to us. <laughs> that is a zero G stall right there. But I want to mention Velocicoaster does accept express passes. And I should have said in Hogsmeade that Hagrid's does not accept express passes. The Velocicoaster also has a single rider line. And just to the right of the entrance, right behind these bushes will be a test seat for you if you have need to test out the seat before you get on the ride. You are required to go through metal detectors with this ride, but those metal detectors and the lockers are deep inside the queue, so you are free to use your phone to take videos and photos for much of the queue. This is a major thrill ride with a top hat, a zero-g stall, S-curves, a heartline roll, a launch, and like I said, it is the fastest ride in the park, getting up to 70 miles per hour. No, I'm not dizzy now. Personally, I prefer the front row of this roller coaster, but I do know someone who's been on this coaster over 200 times, and he'll say row 11 is the best row. We are now back on the main walking path, right after we walk under the arches. Done with our little detour down to the Velocicoaster. So let me show you some more of the area. Right here is a prime photo opportunity with one of the Jurassic Park Jeeps and dinosaurs. This structure here is the Dino Store, the Discovery Center, and Burger Digs, which is a, another counter service restaurant that's gonna have burgers. But let's go show you a little more inside of the Discovery Center. Right there's the Dino Store. This way is Burger Digs, and the Discovery Center is downstairs. You can see these dinos right here, but most of the stuff, including a store, is downstairs. We'll take a quick look. The downstairs of the Discovery Center is home to, oh, I don't know, like four or five interactive areas. Sometimes you can see a, a baby rack being hatched here for one thing it's another thing over here so uh, an interactive area for both young and old and then of course the gift shop okay we're back outside of the Discovery Center again let's continue our walk there is a midway game section to the Jurassic Park area have some fun, play some games. Just down the pathway, we have the Pizza Predatoria. Can anyone guess what you can have in there? Yes, that's correct, pizza. Also some salads and desserts. <laughs> but just to the right of the Pizza Predatoria, you know I have to show you the restrooms. They're gonna be this way. Kinda hidden back here, so. Good thing I'm showing you, I guess, but right back that way men's and women's restrooms. But as for us, we can turn around and keep going this way. Just to the left of the Pizza Predatoria, we have the Raptor Encounter. It's not a ride, it's a photo opportunity or meet and greet with a real live Raptor. And then we have kind of a good spot to watch the Velocicoaster. Go through these bars here, see it in action. Another good spot to see the coaster in action. 
kind of know what you're getting yourself into before you hop on the ride. All right, now walking away from the Pizza Predatoria and the Raptor Encounter area, heading towards another ride, a water ride, the River Adventure. This being a water ride, is it's less busy in the mornings. It gets busier as the day goes on in the afternoons. You don't get as wet on it as you do some of the other water rides in the park, which I will show you momentarily. But we do have specialty t-shirts for this attraction on my channel because we call this attraction Scream Splash Laugh on Rick's Flicks because that's what happens. As you come down that 85 foot drop, you scream. You hit the water, there's a big splash, and then you get a little wet and you laugh at what just happened to you. The thrill of the drop, the cold, refreshing hit of the water, just causes you to laugh. I'm trying to catch another one right now. I'm trying to stretch what I'm saying to get, uh, I think it's coming. Here it comes. See? Look at all the laughter. <laughs> It's fun. Scream, splash, laugh. Check the description box for the t-shirts. When you're done with the Jurassic Park River Adventure, this is the gift shop you're gonna exit through. There are multiple human dryers. If you felt like you got a little too wet, you've got, I think three. I think you have three in total human dryers here. On the opposite side of the walkway, we have Camp Jurassic. Let me go show you it. In addition to being a play area for kids, it is home to the kid ride, Pteranodon Flyers. Well, there's places for kids to run around, even some uh, water cannons in here. Now the ride itself cannot be ridden by two adults. You have to have a kid with you to ride this ride. I think we'll get it in action here. I think I hear it coming. Oh, yep, there it is. The ride is very short, only like, like maybe 40 seconds. It's really, really short. But this whole Camp Jurassic area, a good, uh, good little fun spot for the kids to run around and burn off some energy and have some fun. Leaving Camp Jurassic, continuing our counterclockwise trip around the park. Gonna show you another great photo opportunity and a really, really good place to eat. There is your photo opportunity with a T-Rex and right next to it, Thunder Falls. This is an, it's an elevated counter service restaurant. Everything in here is super good. My favorite quick service counter service restaurant in Islands of Adventure. We are now walking past Thunder Falls into Skull Island, home to the Kong ride. I have to say, inside this ride, one of the best animatronics you're gonna see in a theme park. And here's a pro tip. Take off your 3D glasses when you come to that animatronic. Skull Island is the smallest island at Islands of Adventure. Look at this. We're already in Toon Lagoon. Before I show you Toon Lagoon, I did flub up something in Jurassic Park. I'm trying to show you all the restrooms here and I missed a set. Right next to the Outfitters, which is the store you exit through with the Jurassic Park River Adventure, there are some restrooms next to it. And now you know. Now I feel comfortable showing you Toon Lagoon. The first attraction here on our right will be Dudley do Rips Rip Saw Falls. Let's go take a closer look. Unlike the Jurassic Park River Adventure, this one will get you totally and utterly wet. You will be soaked to the bone once you get off of this ride. There's no escaping it. I mean, a poncho helps a little bit. As a family wearing ponchos goes by, they'll be a little more dry. They do sell ponchos and towels nearby Ripsaw Falls. And of course, the human dryers. But you know what, if you do this one in the summertime,
just walk around wet. It will help you beat the Florida heat. Continuing our lap around, here's a store. What's the matter you? But on the other side, right over there, there's the restrooms. Got to point those out, don't I? And here's one of the cool photo spots at Islands of Adventure, Marmaduke. What you do, you hold the leash and then take the picture. And when you rotate the picture, it looks like Marmaduke is running so fast, he's pulling you through the air. Right next to Marmaduke is Blondie's, a deli sandwich shop. I love it. And directly behind me, another water ride. Popeyes and Bluto's build rat barges. Another ride here that will get you completely and utterly wet. Let me show you. See what I mean? And there's other spots on this ride that will also help ensure you get totally wet. Back to the entrance as there are a few other things I want to show you in this area. Right next to the entrance, a little shop. Again, they do sell ponchos and towels there. And near the exit to the ride, the human dryers for a small fee. I haven't mentioned that already. The human dryers do require a small fee to use. We're gonna be over here right to our right with a long line of people to use the human dryers. I've never been in one though. So there they are. And a little further down, Me Ship the Olive. Another play area for children. There are free water cannons up on this ship. There are some water cannons on the bridge that you have to pay for, but at Me Ship the Olive, free. There's different slides and other interactive activities on Me Ship the Olive. And then behind it, you can either go this way or that way. Kind of just a large area to help you be out of the crowds. The Popeye music is, is blaring, but you can get good views of the waterway, of the Hulk, of the Velocicoaster, and the High and Sky Trolley if you walk around Me Ship the Olive. But we're gonna turn around. There's a popular food spot I need to show you. Again, I'm going to use the entrance to Popeyes and Bluto's as a reference point, a starting point, but directly to the other side of Popeyes, the entrance to Popeyes, you have Wimpy's, home to, I think, the best quick service burger in theme parks, the Wellington Burger. Also, they have the Dole Whip here. Now, leaving the Popeyes area, and the Me Ship the Olive area. We're gonna continue through Toon Lagoon. I gotta show you where the Passholder Lounge is. Another place to get some ice cream and a place to eat. Right under Betty Boop there, that is home to the Passholder Lounge. Next to it, Kathy's Ice Cream for ice cream, of course. And the Comic Strip Cafe, which is home currently to an Asian-inspired menu, but also has like some hamburgers and pizzas and uh, a more American type food. And then across the way from the Comic Strip Cafe, that's the main store in Toon Lagoon. All types of uh, merchandise in there, different IPs, some classic merch like Back to the Future and E.T., but then also some specialty items such as Betty Boop stuff and Popeye stuff, all in that main store there. Now in between Toon Lagoon and Marvel Superhero Island, we have this Midway Games area. We'll walk through this real fast and get to Marvel Superhero Island. Marvel Superhero Island is the last island I need to show you, but there's something I neglected to tell you about the port of entry. So once we get through here and I show you this stuff, I've got to give you that information that I neglected at the beginning of the video. But here we are. Marvel Superhero Island. Cool superhero stuff. Let me show you the attractions and the places to eat. As soon as we get in, to our right is a restroom, which reminds me, I forgot to show you one in Toon Lagoon. 
right next to the comic strip cafe, a set of restrooms. But, but up ahead here, to our left, see that Captain America? Well, his diner is right there. Burgers, chicken sandwiches, milkshakes, fries. A little further down the walking path away from the Captain America diner, we have Auntie Anne's pretzels and a very good dark ride. The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, so much fun. 3D, 4D experience. We're gonna make our way over to the Hulk. But before we get to the Hulk, gotta show you Doctor Doom, don't I? To get to Doctor Doom, we need to hang a right off the main walkway, kinda back this alleyway. If you're interested in a very thrilling launch ride, Dr. Doom is for you. This launches you up faster than what the space shuttle launched. Throughout Marvel Superhero Island, there are spots for you to get a character meet and greet photo. Here we have two villains. I will note, the villains and the heroes are never out at the same time. All right, leaving the Doctor Doom area, straight ahead we have uh, one of the major stores here. It's just called Store, but there's a big Wolverine there. And inside that store, you kind of need to go to the left of it, around it. That's the Spider-Man meet and greet. The other superheroes, they just randomly have spots throughout Superhero Island that they do their meet and greets. But like I said, never superheroes and villains at the same time. To our right here is an arcade. Play all types of games there. Keep moseying on down this corridor. Again, to our right, we're gonna find the Cafe Four. It features mainly like Italian food, pastas and pizzas. And then we're gonna to get to one of the main attractions here, the Incredible Hulk Roller Coaster. But that's not the only attraction this way. Hold on. Oh, it's going to launch. The second fastest ride in the park. Topping off at 67 miles per hour. Just below the top speed of the Velocicoaster. The Hulk with seven inversions. So if you like going upside down, this is the ride for you. If you do not, like going upside down, you might want to avoid the Incredible Hulk roller coaster. Regarding the Hulk, it does have metal detectors, but its locker system is on the outside of the queue, right there. So you can't even take a phone with you to record the queue. Just need to be aware of that as the metal detectors are early on in the queue. But next to the Hulk, we have Storm Force. A Celatron. Very similar to Disney's teacup ride. If you are familiar with the Mad Tea Party at Disney's Magic Kingdom, then you know how this ride operates. Maybe a little more adrenaline required for this one than the Mad Tea Party. Don't get dizzy. I'm not gonna miss these restrooms. To the left of the Cafe Four. Marvel Superhero Island restrooms. I do want to mention when it comes to the ride lockers I've been talking about today, the regular size, the regular size ride lockers are free while you ride. Now if you need a bigger locker, they do have a bank of bigger lockers, but the bigger lockers do come at a small fee. And we have about made our lap around Islands of Adventure. There's something I forgot to tell you about the port of entry, so let me do that right now. This area here of the port of entry, down by the water, all of this area is your one and only smoking area for Islands of Adventure. There's no other smoking area other than this one. And that's your 2024 walking tour of Islands of Adventure. When I complete the walking tour of studios, it will be right here. But until then, there will be a placeholder video. 
Regardless, whatever's right here, don't miss the magic, don't miss the fun, click it. Subscribe.